Hi guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be covering a topic that so many of you have been requesting, probably for the better part of three or four months now, and that is how to bleed the clutch. Along with that, I'm going to show you how to bleed the brakes and I'm going to show you how to do it using the reverse bleed or back bleed method. You're going to need a few things to do this. First of all, go and hit that link in the description and go pick yourself up a big syringe like this and a piece of PVC tubing. You're also going to need some brand new dot for braking clutch fluid. Uh, a thing about this, if you pick this up today, for example, from a local hardware store garage, wherever you want to go and get it, Leave this to sit overnight. Do not go straight into using it because with this being moved around, it's gonna have put air into the oil and those bubbles need to come to the surface of the bottle and then when you take the cap off, you need to allow that air to come out of the bottle and out of the oil. If you use this straight away after it's been shaken around, in about four days time, you're gonna have spongy brakes and a spongy clutch. The VS1400, the, the clutch line itself has so many curves and corners and loads of places that little bubbles and airlocks can happen and that's why I think it's so difficult to bleed this system from the conventional manner. The reason the reverse bleed method is so effective on this bike is because you are putting the oil and therefore any air through the system in the direction that air would want to travel naturally and that's up. If we go from the top down we're trying to force air down the line whereas if we go from the bottom, we're going with the direction of the air. And that's why this method is so effective. It still takes time. You still have to do this two or three times for the clutch and the brakes to make sure that it's done correctly. But hopefully with this video, you should be able to achieve a proper, fully functional clutch and front and rear brake using this method. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if you haven't taken off the side casing yet, you will need to obviously do that. It's a few bolts on this area and the chrome side casing will come off. Incidentally, if you've never taken this side cover off, there's a few things in here that you might need to know in the future. Number one is that this is your neutral light switch down here. This is If your neutral light switch isn't working, it could well be this sensor that's gone bad. And we have the bleed nipple. We also have the gear shifter that goes into the gearbox here. And uh, there's a few other bits. And this cable coming out is from the stator. And we've also got this little beauty, which in fact is your kickstand kill switch. I've just installed a new one recently, that's why it's not actually attached yet. This does have to obviously be attached to your footboards or your foot pegs, etc. And yeah, that's it. So, before I start putting a syringe on here, I need to make sure that this bleed nipple is actually going to come free for us. So, take the rubber tip off, like so. And I just want to add a bit of pressure and see if it will come undone without too much. There we go. You see how much that moved from closed to open? That's the same sort of amount of movement I want to be making during this bleed process. Anything more than that, and you risk bringing the nipple out too far and allowing air and seepage past the threads of the bleed nipple. So if you find that you're getting constant air when you're bleeding over the clutch, or the brakes, if you're getting a lot of bubbles all the time, it might be that you're undoing the nipple too far. So just that amount of movement from there to there is plenty. Right, let's grab the syringe. So go ahead and pre-fill your syringe with brand new brake fluid. Put it to one side, and then we can remove the cap on the master. Inside of the cap, you'll notice that there is a, a rubber boot. It's actually a diaphragm. That diaphragm helps provide pressure to the system. So if it's perished or got holes, etc., you need to replace it, otherwise it won't work properly. This is actually incorrect. All of those inner sections of that diaphragm should be collapsed, not extended. As you can see those two little pinprick holes there, that's what gives that pressure to the diaphragm, draws in air from the outside and pushes it on top of the diaphragm. 
If your clutch or brake fluid is this color, you need to change it. The reason you need to change these fluids over the course of sort of 12 to 18 months is because they actually break down. The particles inside them, they break down and become less effective. That's why you end up with a spongy brake after two years of not changing the brake fluid. The same can be said for the clutch. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure that pipe onto the bleed nipple. I'm just going to use a zip tie. We're going to be applying quite a lot of pressure through the syringe and down into the pipe, so there is always a chance that it's going to pop off of the nipple. So I'd rather we avoided that if possible. It's very corrosive dot for breaking clutch fluid. If you get it on your paintwork, on your chrome, etc., and you don't get it all off, it will eat through it. So worth getting some towels and rags out at this point as well. Once we open the bleed valve, it's important that you don't let off the pressure on the syringe. If you apply pressure and then let that pressure off, it will start to suck its way back up to the syringe and we really don't want to be doing that. So we open the bleed valve, we apply pressure and after a few seconds you should see new clutch fluid coming through that top hole of the two there that you can see. If you look closely you should see it coming out. Now if you do need to take a break at any point this can be quite hard on the hands using the syringe. Just close that bleed nipple before you take the pressure off the syringe and then you can continue as you would like to after you've taken a break. So I just want to mention something, with the syringe under pressure, you're actually providing quite a high pressure to the entire system. You run the risk of brake fluid, clutch fluid, firing out of that top hole. So if you have a pet in the garage with you, if you have a family member, children, etc., make sure that they are stood well away and that you have got protective eyewear on and you've covered your paint and chrome with rags. We can continue to fill the system. As you can see, that oil is incredibly murky. That's because it's old oil mixed with new oil. We're gonna turn off the bleed valve. We'll syringe out that old oil and then we'll repeat the process until fresh, nice, clear clutch fluid is present. Once we've got nice, clean oil, we can pump that lever quite a bit and you'll start to see any leftover air in the form of bubbles coming up through the pipework. You should now be able to start feeling that clutch getting harder and harder and you might even hear a clunk and that clunk is the oil engaging correctly with the clutch itself. If you're still getting bubbles or if you're not getting any tension in that lever, one little trick is you can move the handle and the lever up the handlebar so that it's horizontal. This just provides an easier escape route for those air bubbles. Any air that's trapped around those bends and corners will have a much easier route now, especially if you're using new uh, steel braided cables, they can be quite tricky to prime. That what you can see there is not bubbles, it's not air, it's fluid and it's going up and down the system functioning correctly. At this point when you prime that lever and you pump on it you should start to feel the clutch engaging and once you get to that point you want to just keep pumping a few times, make sure there's no air in the system, you could even leave it for half an hour to let those bubbles naturally rise through the pipework, top up the oil in the reservoir and then we can go ahead and replace that diaphragm. Now the diaphragm, as I mentioned before, has to be replaced with those folds in the center collapsed. You don't want to extend them. Then we can put the cap on top, put the screws back in. It's a good idea to make sure the writing is facing the rider. That's just how they come as stock. And then we can move the lever back down to its normal position, throw a leg over the bike and Put them in the orientation that you require. Give that clutch lever a good few squeezes and trust me you'll know if that clutch is working. Okay so now we can move on to the rear brake. Now the rear brake and the front brake and the clutch all work in exactly the same way. They're hydraulic which means there is pressurized fluid that controls 
tension in the brake and they're controlled by some form of lever. In this case we've got a foot lever, on the handlebars we've obviously got hand levers. This is exactly the same as what you find up on your handlebars except it's in this location so if you can think about the rear brake system as the front brake system just with a foot lever and a different location for the uh, the masters then everything is pretty much exactly the same. We've got our bleed nipple on the rear brake caliper which we'll get to in a moment. We've got old fluid at the moment in this master so I'm going to drain all of that out with one of the syringes and then we're going to go through the same process filling up via the brake caliper until there's new fluid in here and using the lever to get rid of any bubbles and keeping an, keeping an eye on the bubbles in this master. So let's get the syringes and get to work. So we've pre-cracked the bleed nipple and just done it back up again. Now we can take the end of our hose, same as we did before. Pop that over the, uh, the nipple, do a test here. Yep, there we are. That's all the movement you need. You don't need any more than that. And we can start applying pressure again. There we go. And all, immediately it's starting to come through the master. I'm going to keep pressure on. Careful again, obviously, because it will spray if it's under too much pressure, so mind your eyes. Okay, so now that we've got lovely fresh fluid in there and there's absolutely no bubbles and when we push down on our actual lever over here we've got a lovely solid action going on and we can hear and see the caliper at the other end we can see that working as it should. So we've tightened up the bleed nipple on that end, removed the, the syringe, lovely fresh fluid in here, uh, brake pedal is working great, now we can install the cap, remember to make sure the rubber boot is in the collapsed position, pop that on there and then we can go ahead and tighten up these bolts. And that's it guys, I hope that helped. If you do have any questions regarding the method that I used, please leave a comment in the section below and I will get back to you. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please do hit that subscribe button. At this moment in time, we're heading towards that thousand subscribers mark, so it would be really, really great if you guys could hit that subscribe button so we can get through that milestone. Some of you might be wondering, those of you that have been following from the beginning of the teardown right through to the rebuild, why the bike looks effectively back together and ready to ride. It might look that way, but it's not ready to ride. There's still lots of things to do, but the reason it looks like a bike again and not an engine on the workbench is because I needed to reassemble it to a degree so that I could continue to do these videos for you. Not only that, but the engine we finished about a week, two weeks ago now, and I need to find out whether or not that engine runs. And I think that's probably gonna be the next video. There's some new things being installed as well that I'll do videos on. We've got a new Daymaker headlight that I'll show you how to install using the existing wiring harness. We've got pod filters going in onto the carburetors. So I'll show you what you need to know about that in regards to tuning, in regards to jetting and your exhaust system, etc. Also got something a little special going on with the exhaust right now. I can tell you that the exhaust for the time being, because it's a Cobra, drag system but it is an old drag system it's starting to get rusty i'm actually going to wrap the pipes so we'll see how that looks if you guys want a video on how to wrap the pipes please feel free to leave a comment in the section below and apart from that ladies and gents take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next video all the best bye bye